friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Abby from Abby's Bookish Life, and today I will be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. So this tag is used for booktubers to kind of gush about the books that they've been reading for the first half of the year, and I'm so excited to be doing my first one. The first question is best book you've read so far in 2020. Now I didn't include books that I was rereading this year because I reread some of my childhood favorites that I knew were going to still be favorites of mine. So I'm using only my new books that I've read this year. And I picked three that were kind of, I know it says pick one, I picked three because I was going off of my rating system and I had three that were all the same ranking and so I wanted to make sure I told you about all three of those. The first one is Quiet Girl in a Noisy World, an introvert story by Debbie Tung. I loved this graphic novel. It is so cute. It has gorgeous little drawings. It's all in like a gray and black and white theme and it's all about being an introvert and what life is like as an introvert and it really connected with me emotionally, so I loved this book. One of my other favorite books for this year is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, and I loved this book. It was a dystopian, end of the world, um, virus <laughs> novel, but it was written like poetry. It had some great messages. It focuses on a touring theater group after the fall of civilization, and all of that just hit right at home for me. So I loved this book and I'm so glad I picked it up this year. And the third favorite that I want to talk about is The Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams. I had heard so much about this book. It had been so hyped by other booktubers and I gave it a chance. It was kind of about sports. It talks about how Gavin is a professional baseball player and normally I don't gravitate towards books like that because I'm not a very sporty person so I don't connect very much with those but I love love loved this romance novel it was everything it did everything I needed it to do I loved it and I would highly recommend it the next question is best sequel you've read so far in 2020 and I haven't read very many sequels I think I've only read two technically. I've read The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins and Undercover Bromance by Lisa K. Adams. So I'm gonna have to go with Undercover Bromance because even though it wasn't like as good as the Bromance Book Club, it was still really cute and I really enjoyed it. I listened to the audiobook of it and it was great. It was a cute little love story. It added some social commentary and I was really excited to see a character that I knew find love and explore his own life. Next is a new release that you haven't read yet but you want to. And for this I'm going to choose The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I've heard so many good things about this and it's a story of family, it follows a family across generations, and I love stories like that. Those connect really well with me and I just heard so many great things and I cannot wait to read it. I did request Vanishing Half from my library, so hopefully it becomes available soon so that I can get my hands on it. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year, I mean I'm obviously going to say Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. I am excited about the new Twilight release. I love getting to see multiple perspectives in books, so getting to see the first book from Edward's perspective is just exactly what I wanted. But on another note, Crazy Stupid Bromance, which is the third book in the Bromance Book Club series, is coming out at the in October of this year, and I'm really excited for it. I don't really know any other like big books that are coming out this year, so if you know any and you want to throw some my way, please do. Next is my biggest disappointment, and I chose two books for this. The first one is If You Must Know by Jamie Beck, and this was a book I got from Amazon First Reads. The synopsis sounded really intense, really cool. The main character, Amanda, is very like type A personality. I thought I would connect with her really well, and I just really didn't like the book, and it took a lot in me to continue reading it. So it was just a really big disappointment. Honestly, very forgettable. I didn't like it. And the second one is very controversial, and I'm sorry, but it's All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. Everyone had said this was such a great romance, and that although the age difference is problematic, that you will be able to see past it, and that you will root for this couple. And I was just never able to see past the age gap. It's not that there's an age gap, it's that the girl is a child, and the man is a full adult, and I can't, I couldn't, 
I couldn't get my head around that. I couldn't accept it. So I didn't, and I didn't enjoy it. The writing was fabulous. I would read something else by Bryn Greenwood 100%. I just didn't like the book because I couldn't get past the concept. I can see how other people might like it, but it just wasn't for me. Next is Biggest Surprise, and for this, I'm gonna go with Opium and Absinthe by Lydia Kang. This book I got from Amazon First Reads. It was my second month of choosing an Amazon First Reads book, and as I mentioned before, If You Must Know was so disappointing that I kind of expected Opium and Absinthe to be disappointing as well, but it was wonderful. It was everything I wanted and everything I was looking for in that type of book. And I'm so happy that I read it and I can't wait to check out more of Lydia King's books. Favorite new author, debut or new to you. And I know I'm behind on the times. I missed the curve for this one, but I'm going to go with Riley Sager. I read my first Riley Sager novel this month. Um, I wasn't reading thrillers a lot. I was reading mostly romance for the past few years. And so I kind of missed Riley Sager's debut, but he's new to me. He's a new author to me. And I read Home Before Dark this month and I absolutely loved it. It was wonderful. And I can't wait to read more Riley Sager books because I love him. I'm so excited. Newest fictional crush. I am going to go with Dr. Drew Nichols from The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. He was dreamy. He had big emotional growth in the book. It was just beautiful. And I loved him. I loved he, him and Alexa together. They were so wonderful. And I just think that he is a dreamy hunky doctor and was exactly what I was looking for in a romance novel. Next is my newest favorite character, and I'm going to pick two different characters from two different books. And the first one is Matilda Pembroke from Opium and Absinthe. She is spunky, she goes against societal norms, she makes big, bold decisions that help her along her path, even though her family is like, that's messed up, please don't do that. Like, you're going against everything we believe in. She's like, well, that's not what I believe in, so I'm gonna do what I want. And I respected her so much. I loved that about her. She was bold, she was new, she was fresh to read about, and I just really loved her. And my other favorite fictional character is Eid from The Priory of the Orange Tree, and I just loved her. She was so intense, so headstrong, but had a full character arc where she battled between following duty and following her heart, and ended up having to make some tough decisions. And I love the adventures that she goes on, and the things that she's facing in this book, both internally and externally. I just loved her and I really want more of her. I'm, I mean, as if this wasn't enough of her. Next is a book that made you cry. And for that, I'm gonna go with After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I cried maybe three or four times in this book. It was really more emotional than I expected it to be. It really got me. I was a little bit torn up about some of the stuff in this book and some of it really got to me. It was just really a great, a very well-written book and emotionally wrecked me. A book that made me happy is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. And I just really enjoyed this book. It was a very sweet, kind of intense, love, growth, isolation story. And I just really enjoyed reading it. It made me happy to read about the ending was, I mean, sad, but also happy. And I just really had a warm, fuzzy feeling while reading this book that I don't get with every book. So I'm happy that I read it and it definitely made me happy to see what happened in the book. The book itself is not super happy, but it made me happy to read it. And another book that is happy that made me happy to read was Book Love by Debbie Tung. I love her graphic novels and I read that on an ebook from the library and it was the same character from Quiet Girl in a Noisy World because that is Debbie Tung. She's drawing things about her life and Book Love is a graphic novel about being in love with books and loving books and what it's like to live your life surrounded by books and it just gave me the warm and fuzzies. I loved it. The next question is the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year, and I had a lot of tough choices. I chose Conjure Women by Afia Atakora, and I just think this cover is 
gorgeous. The colors are sickening. The spine with the flowers, amazing. I love the flowers all the way around. This beautiful, like two women conjo like connected, one above, one below, surrounded by flowers, overlapping the the words on the page, and then even the like inside page, this is a gorgeous color. And the hard cover is this beautiful maroon that matches the flowers on the front. I just, everything about it is beautiful to me, and I'm so excited to read it because it's gorgeous. And I'm hoping that the writing is as gorgeous as the cover is. The final question, what books do you still need to read before the end of the year? I have a couple choices for this. One is I want to read more Riley Sager. I haven't read many of his other books. I need to read more because I loved his writing and I loved the thriller that I read from him. Another one I really want to read before the end of the year is Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. And I have heard so many great things about this. My friend Allie lent it to me. She highly suggested it. She said that it's fantastic. And I'm really trying to get more into adult fantasy. So I'm hoping that this will be something I love and something I will get to before the end of the year. I also want to read the Giver sequels that I bought in my May book haul because I didn't know they existed and now I feel like I need to read them. And finally, last but not least, I need to finish The Fiery Cross by Diana Gabaldon. This is the, the fifth book in the Outlander series and I started it, I'm about 300 pages in and I am just slowly reading it, but it's big. It's like 1400 pages and I really, I've been on a roll of reading one of these per year and so I really need to finish this one by the end of this year. Thank you all so much for watching and for supporting me. Please like, subscribe, and share and I will see you guys next time. Bye friends.